Chapter 18 Bench Press was still examining the young girl as best he could despite her radiation suit. He'd been able to check her pulse through a zipper pocket in the sleeve of her suit and he was now shining a penlight into her eyes through her helmet's visor. Physically, there didn't seem to be anything wrong with the girl and there was no sign of drug use. Still, she didn't respond when spoken to, her expression remained blank and her body limp. The other strange thing was how she constantly stared at the oak doors at the other end of the room. It was like she expected someone to come walking in the bank at any moment and was dreading it. The whole time bench press examining the girl, her gaze never left the front doors. Bench Press stood up and looked at the mystery girl seated before him, her gloved hands still secured in front of her with plastic cuffs. The team's medic didn't figure the girl as any kind of threat. She didn't look like a threat anyway. But then, what was she doing in the company of an escaped terrorist? How did she get mixed up in all of this? Bench Press struggled to understand. Maybe she's just one of Danny Blue's groupies and things got a little too real for her when she helped bust him out. Bench Press thought to himself. Seeing real death during the escape was probably a harsher wake-up call than the poor thing could handle. Before Bench Press could finish writing the girl's backstory, Kyle and Laura came down the stairs. Sam, Bench Press, get those two ready to move. We're rolling out in five minutes. Kyle said as he and Laura walked out the front doors of the bank. Kyle and Laura made their way straight to her pickup truck and climbed in. From the driver's seat, Laura started working the infotainment system and brought the radiation map up on the monitor. Laura had examined the western route out of the sea zone back when they were still in Iron Horse, but she needed a quick refresher. The good news was the lower radiation alley began to widen several hundred meters down the road and eventually became just over a kilometer in width. First, they'd have to drive down this very street until it connected with a parkway running alongside a dried river. From halfway down the river, the lower radiation alley curved southward. This would force the team to drive across the dried riverbed and come up on the other side where the city's downtown core still stood. After driving through the financial district, the team would find a freeway on-ramp giving them a straight line out the west end of the sea zone. Kyle looked the radiation map over again, more slowly and carefully this time. As the young bounty hunter scrolled the route on the infotainment screen, he made mental notes of all possible choke points. If I wanted to ambush me, where would I do it? Kyle asked himself. Laura, keep the engine running. I'm going to help Sam and Bench press load the cargo. Kyle said before climbing out of the truck and marching back toward the bank. As he walked, Kyle looked to the western sky and noticed for the first time a line of dark clouds paralleling the horizon like a razor's edge. Kyle immediately turned around and ran back to Laura's truck, swung the passenger side door open and jumped in. Bring the map back up. Kyle barked to the team's driver. Laura waved her gloved right hand over the infotainment screen and the radiation map reappeared. Kyle reached over with his own gloved hand and punched two buttons beneath the monitor. The blotchy, multicolored filter showing radiation levels disappeared and the image became a normal satellite shot. Both Laura and Kyle died a little inside when they saw the rain clouds five clicks west of their position. Sam, Kyle began to say over his suit's radio. When you were monitoring the weather network and checking the wind patterns, did you notice a rainstorm west of our position? Back inside the bank, Sam was still standing behind Danny Blue. The breacher then remembered the weather report he'd seen just a couple hours earlier. If it wasn't for the visor of his radiation suit, Sam would have done a facepalm. Oh, shit. Sam said, Sorry, boss. I must have forgotten to tell you about that there rainstorm when we were all back at the bridge. Am I missing something? Bench Press asked, worry and confusion in his voice. Seriously, is something wrong? Everyone has a breaking point and Laura finally reached hers. God damn it, Sam. 
The wheel woman shouted over her suit's radio. I swear if we make it out of this fucking mess alive, I'm gonna rip your nut sack off and make you wear it like a clown nose. Luckily, the prisoners' radiation suits were not equipped with radios. This meant Danny Blue and Mouse were left completely in the dark as to the team's discussion. All the better for Sam to hide his embarrassment. Everybody, just shut up and let me think. Cal said in a surprisingly calm voice. The team obeyed a brief moment of silence passed and then their leader spoke again. Okay, here's the situation. Cal began to explain. Rain is falling west of our position, temporarily sealing off our route out of the sea zone. As Danny Blue remained on his knees with his hands secured with plastic cuffs, he looked over at bench press and sensed something was amiss just by how much straighter the big man stood. With Laura, Sam, bench press and slick all ears, Cal continued. The bad news is we're stuck here until the rain stops. The good news is we can use this to our advantage. What's the plan, boss? Laura asked, a little ashamed of herself for having lost her cool moments earlier. Cal went on. Our boy Danny Blue was pretty smart when he took shelter in the bank. Not only do the thick walls provide extra shielding from the rads, the building is an easily defendable fortress. Back inside the bank, both Sam and Bench Press looked around the large room they were standing in before nodding to each other in silent agreement. Cal went on. This is the narrowest point along the lower radiation alley. That means there's only one way the young revolutionaries can approach us, making this an ideal ambush site. Up on the roof, Slick listened to the boss and admired his tactical thinking. From his position along the front western corner of the bank's roof, the team's sniper had a clear line of sight down the only road the young revolutionaries could take while avoiding hot zones to each side. Slick knew there was no need to worry about the parallel street behind them as it was torn up with the scourge of all cities, road construction. He looked over the back of the building earlier and glanced westward. About 60 meters up, several abandoned construction vehicles surrounded a big hole in the middle of the street, a water main that never got replaced. This made flanking the team's position extremely unlikely. Sam, Cal went on. Can you rig up some party favors for when our unwanted guests arrive? This was Sam's opportunity to redeem himself after his colossal fuck-up and the breacher was both grateful to Kyle and anxious to make it up to everybody else by doing what he did best, blowing shit up. Sure, boss. I can make us all some real nice party favors. Sam answered back.